Paul Keeley, EcoBuilt Passive House. Were you aware that there's three types of Passive House certification? There's Passive House Classic. There's also Passive House Plus, which is essentially a Passive House Classic with a net zero solar array, having the ability to produce all of the energy that the house consumes. And there's also Passive House Low Energy, which is one step below Passive House Classic, ultimately allows the passive home to have twice the amount of heating and cooling demand and meant really for properties in a highly shaded environment, okay? But the Passive House Classic is the home that's naturally facing south, providing a lot of opportunity for free solar gain in the wintertime. This house behind me has just been recently certified Passive House Plus. So there's actually a solar array on the roof system connected to the net metering program, producing all of the energy that the house consumes with a very small seven kilowatt solar array. So now that you know what a Passive House Plus is, we're gonna to talk to you about the differences about what separate a Passive House from a non-Passive House. Orientation in a Passive House versus a non-Passive. You know, the big difference here is when you're designing a Passive Home, you're trying to reduce the energy demand on the house as much as possible for energy conservation. So if you have the ability to face the house south and using high performance windows and doors, allow all of that free solar gain heat inside the home, you're gonna do it. And when you can build a house to meet the passive house energy demand from a cash value, most passive houses, you know, cost less than 200 to $250 a year for all heating and cooling purposes. It's very important to understand that a passive home is not a passive solar house. It's not a house that needs the sun to work. It's just a house that reaps extra reward, extra benefit, extra conservation of energy if the house is able to be open to that solar gain. It means $500 for all heating and cooling purposes instead of 200 to 250 dollars. Passive windows versus non-passive windows. Let's say we have triple glaze passive windows and also triple glaze non-passive windows. Air spaces between the glass. Most non-passive windows have approximately a half inch airspace. Most passive windows have three quarters of an inch airspace. Thicker spaces, more argon gas, less heat loss through the glass or less heat gain through the glass as well during summertime. Spacers between the glass. Spacers between passive house glass, the panes of glass are considered thermal bridge free or warm edge spacers so that there's no heat loss with respect to conduction through the spacers. Non-passive windows, on the other hand, are not thermal bridge protected. Most of them are aluminum spacers. Even though they're aluminum, they assist with the conduction of the heat through the glass, whether that's escaping the home in the wintertime or coming into the home in the summertime. Thermal bridge protected spacers, big deal. Low E coatings put on the glass. Passive house windows have two low E coatings and they're put on the faces of the glass that reflect heat back to the inside environment. So both of the coatings are designed to push all that heat back to the inside and also let the incoming solar gain through the glass during the winter time. Triple glaze and non-passive windows, they normally have a low E coating reflecting the heat back to the inside of the room, but they also have a reflective coating deflecting heat away from the building. So windows that aren't able to gain that energy from the sun during the winter time in the southern direction, or windows that ultimately are designed to block that heat, not only in the summer, but in the winter time as well. Passive house glass also does have the opportunity to block the heat out, but we don't want to do that in the southern direction. We want to do that on the west side and the east side. Yes, and that's possible for passive house glass to reflect the heat in general, the sun as it's rising and setting horizontal sunlight in the eastern direction, as it's setting horizontal sunlight in the western direction, very difficult sunlight to shade. Sun in the southern wall of the building is actually very easy to shade. So passive house windows will still have coatings on them to block that heat coming in from horizontal sunlight in the east and west directions in the summertime, making it a house that's easy to cool as well. But the point here being, coatings should not only reflect heat back to the inside environment, but they should let that free energy through if you have the opportunity for solar collectors on the south side of the building. Window frames. 
Passive window frames are insulated. Non-passive window frames are uninsulated. Ultimately, the passive house windows are considered approximately three times more efficient than the non-passive windows. And from a comfort criteria, you know, the inside face of the glass in a passive house is above 17 degrees Celsius because 17 degrees Celsius is the temperature gradient that has been proven where your body will sense the difference in temperature. In non-passive windows, the inside face of that glass is known to be less than 12 degrees, could be somewhere between eight to 12 degrees Celsius. It's very cold. Your body is gonna sense that coldness coming through the glass, even though it's triple glaze. So go triple, but go passive triple.